Me, by Fred Schroeder. Episode 5 Coming of Age in the 30s and 40s After my dad got a full-time job with the county, about 1936, things were much better and we lived a normal life. Before the Depression, Dad had bought a 1928 Ford Model A sedan, which he kept until the 1940s. When we could afford to go on vacation, we almost always went to the Oregon coast and stayed at Cannon Beach, or later at Randall's Shore Pine Cottages near Waldport. In those times, when you stayed at a beach cottage, you brought your own bedding and most kitchenware. They furnished a wood-burning stove and the bare beds, but we had fun. Dad had rigged up a big box for bedding to attach to the rear bumper of the Model A and two boxes for kitchen stuff and food which were strapped to the running board. When all five of us were in the car, there was no room inside the car and no trunks in those days. At Waldport, we went out in the morning and dug big razor clams up to eight inches long. They don't make them like that anymore. I think the limit was 36 per person, and there were five of us. Dad also knew where to get big Dungeness crabs, which got trapped in the tide pools at low tide. We ate well. I remember one year we were down there during Waldport's Crab Festival, and they came in with a big flatbed piled high with crabs, and were giving them away to everyone who attended their festival. It's difficult in today's multicultural society to think about what it was like in the 30s and 40s. Even in northern cities like Portland, it was common to see whites-only signs on restaurants and other public places. I guess we didn't really see anything wrong with that. When I worked on the railroad dining cars in my senior year in high school, I became friends with some of the black waiters. The chef told me I didn't really want to be involved with those people. My grandmother's neighborhood had become 90% black and was interesting that although she had little to do with her black neighbors, it was her black neighbor who came to take care of her when she got very ill, not her white friends. We were at my grandmother's house in 1936 when Joe Lewis knocked out Braddock for the World Heavyweight Championship. I wondered at the time why all grandma's neighbors were out on the street yelling and celebrating but even though I was only seven, I think I really understood. I don't really remember much about my grade school years at Fernwood. I was diagnosed, probably wrongly, with anemia in maybe second or third grade, and on doctor's orders, only went to school half days for a while. I was supposed to rest the other half day. I was aware that a lot of the other kids in my class had a lot more of the world's things than we had. I was a good student and I think top of the class in arithmetic and spelling and stuff. I went home for lunch instead of eating in the cafeteria because it was too expensive. I never went to kindergarten because in those days Portland charged for kindergarten but not the rest of the grades. I think I was too small to be much of an athlete. World War II started when we were in sixth grade, and I think we believed it would be over very quickly and we could get back to normal, but that was not the case. We had scrap drives in which I think I gave away some of my dad's prized junk, which didn't make him very happy. When we went on vacation to the Oregon coast, we couldn't have lights on at night or use the headlights when driving. I got a paper route when I was 12, I think. It was between 57th and 6th, and maybe Tillamook and Halsey. I needed a bike for the route. I had been using my brother's old bike when he was away at school, but that one was falling apart. This was wartime and even bikes were scarce. We saw a new one advertised in the paper and when we got there, we found he was charging maybe 25% more than the controlled list price. My dad started to dicker with him, but then several other buyers appeared at the house so we had to take it. The bike was not only useful for my route, but gave me some new freedom. I would ride down the sidewalk and fling the papers towards the porch. I think I got to be pretty accurate. I don't think I got many complaints, probably because it was wartime and people didn't expect their papers hand delivered to the door. I got another lesson in life 
from one of my customers who didn't pay for months at a time. One time she offered a $20 bill, which she thought I couldn't change, but when I said I could, she changed her mind. This was money out of my pocket, and I had to keep riding my bike up to the house in vain two or three evenings a week. When I finally got them to pay up, I told them I was no longer going to deliver to their house and got a complaint of being rude to the newspaper office. I think I made $30 or so a month for the paper route and thought I was really in the big money. Everything was rationed during the war years. Meat was very scarce because most was going to our servicemen, so nobody complained. It took red ration tokens to buy meat and everyone was issued a certain amount each month. It took blue ration tokens to buy most other groceries. Sugar was in really short supply because the German U-boats were sinking our ships from Central America. We used honey for most recipes that called for sugar. Rubber was almost non-existent in the civilian market because most rubber came from Indonesia and South America. Tires were made from ersatz rubber and not very good. When I used my bike for my paper route, I was patching the tires almost every other day. Gasoline was very scarce for all the reasons stated above. Most people had A ration cards, which allowed you to probably go on a short vacation once a year and maybe drive to church and possibly the store. A B card was for people to drive, usually carpool, to work in war industries. We had several shipyards, victory ships, and minesweepers in the Portland area. A X card meant you were really a favored person doctor, or wheel in the war industry, and you were really everybody's friend if you had one of those in your car window. In 1942, Brother Bob was invited to join his Uncle Sam for a cruise to Europe. He was about to board the troop ship, but received orders not to board due to a discovered medical condition. So, like his father before him, he served his duty on home soil. Of course, there were no cars built from 1940 till 1946. All in all, we were still infinitely better off than those who lived in Europe and didn't suffer any real hardship. Everybody's big concern was for our troops fighting overseas. I wondered at the time why the old Japanese grocer where grandma always shopped suddenly disappeared and the store was taken over by others. It was years later when I finally understood the injustice of sending all of those American citizens off to camps and taking over their property. One of our Fernwood classmates was Susan Burse, who at her mother's insistence took singing and dancing lessons and right after grade school went to Hollywood and dyed her hair blonde and became a big star as Jane Powell. <laughs>